I had spent seven years trying to write various first novels. And by this time I had, I don't know, maybe a hundred unfinished novels. I was in my late thirties. I was working as a legal secretary and finally I just thought, you know, I, I just have to quit and write till my money runs out and not have a job or anything. I'm going to sit down on day one and do nothing but work on this book and I'm going to finish it in a month and then I will have a finished book and see it doesn't matter what happens then you know I mean maybe it will get published or maybe it won't but it will be finished and then I can go on and get on with my life yeah that was that was the, that was the, that was the plan my father called and he started haranguing me and saying, well, you know, you don't think there's any hope and just kind of really shouting at me. After this phone conversation, I just thought, you know, we don't pick our parents. If we could pick, I'm sure I would have picked better than you. I thought, well, what would happen? What would happen if you could pick? What would it take to make interesting decisions or interesting mistakes? I suddenly thought, well, you know, J.S. Mill, was, was taught Greek at the age of three. I mean, he had an extremely challenging early education. I think, well, what would happen if you had a single mother and you, who tried out the principles of J.S. Mill? And then, I don't know, I thought of Kurosawa's Seven Samurai. You know, what if the mother were to use Seven Samurai to provide role models for her fatherless boy? He doesn't know what his father is. To begin with, he's going to imagine a hero and imagine that he can prepare to meet him. But what if he meets him and he's a disappointment? He can go out and look for a better father than the one fate provided. He can go out and test people. I was getting quite involved in this. And at the time, it seemed like this breakthrough. There was this complete change in, I felt, change in quality. And I was writing very fast. I would write one chapter in three days. I'd write another chapter in two days. But I would look at them afterwards. You know, I would look and I would think, you know, this is, this is the real thing. We don't actually see the real thing very often. And so it's going to be all right, because now I know what I need to do, the real thing, which is just to have absolute, uninterrupted time and complete focus on the work. Unfortunately, I did not, I did not finish that book in the allotted month. Technically, it was going to be a very difficult book to get into print, because it had Greek, it had Japanese, Old Norse, you know, like pages full of numbers. There were just all sorts of different things in that book that would be very challenging. My agent would send me off for meetings with editors, and I would think that we were going to talk about how they would give me some money so I could concentrate on finishing the book. And they would all be very surprised by this. And what they, instead, they would offer unsolicited advice. My view was, you know, a book benefits from the undivided attention of its author. And this turned out to be a scandalous, I mean, it wasn't even scandalous. It was so outrageous a point of view that it didn't even cross anyone's mind that one might think that. Obviously what you needed was guidance. The difficulty was that different people liked different parts of the book. And so each person would feel that with some assistance I could be helped to make the whole book like the part that they liked. Or maybe we could just get rid of all the parts they didn't like and just keep what they liked. You know, I had really thought this was my make or break book and I would have a clear answer by the end of September 1995 and instead I was just mired down in this unending just mess and, and going crazy. You know, Miramax, I mean, they had a big success with a book at Frankfurt. Suddenly, you know, publishers up and down Europe were clamoring to get their hands on this manuscript. Actual copies were being passed from hand to hand and people would be sitting up in their hotel rooms laughing out loud and reading out great bits to other people. And then I get the proofs, you know, the galleys. And the copy editor just kind of went through whiting out my markup. You know, she's just made hundreds of gratuitous changes. All these people off in the world are getting very excited, but I'm just um, sort of walking up and down howling. You have these people committed to the disempowerment of the author, you know, at every single stage. Every time I thought that I had finally drawn a line, there would be some new problem and it just, it went on too long. When you complain about things in the publishing industry, people always tell you it's a business. It's like, well, it's, that's capitalism. <laughs> but the thing is, I mean, a lot of the things that happen can't wholly be 
um, accounted for by the mere logic of finance. I would go to talk to people about the things that I would, you know, wanted to do, like the way that you could use data visualization in a book. Or I would talk about the difficulties of getting Greek and Japanese into The Last Samurai, and how it would be really great to work with an editor who's interested in the technical side, where you, you know, somebody who's actually interested in sorting these things out to the benefit of the book. And, and, but see, people just say, but you know, no, no, no editors are interested in the technical side. You're not going to get it. No, no, no. And, and they would feel, and they would be quite exasperated. You know, it wasn't like, oh, this is a really exciting thing to do. It was, well, you know, really, if you want to do that, you should probably publish yourself, which seemed like such an in indictment of the industry. I guess it's a, cu it's a, a culture with um, strong past dependencies, I guess what I would say. And so a lot of things are done because they are developments from things that were done in the past. And, you know, we're sort of left to... Well, to hope things get better, I guess, you yeah. know.